In today's tech video, we are going to unbox this guy right here. This is the Lenovo Chromebook, and this is the 14-inch. Uh, we're going to unbox it and show you guys what it looks like and what it can do. Okay, once you get it out of the box, this is all it comes with right here. So it's uh, pretty pretty simple. All it has is, you know, you get your laptop, laptop obviously. But right here is your power cable that this end here hooks into the brick right here. And then you just kind of plug it in. Now this does plug in with a USB-C, which I'm pretty happy about because pretty much everything is going USB-C. But you'll plug that in to charge it and then this end into a wall. This is what it looks like at first glance. It's got the Chromebook branding here at the top. And then it's got a Lenovo uh, logo right there. Um, it is kind of, I just brought it in from the outside so it's cold coming into a warm weather. So that's why you see all those fingerprints on there. But let's go ahead and open up and see what it looks like on the inside. Okay, so they give you a little Lenovo services. Uh, thank you paper if you want to register this. All right, but this is what the laptop itself looks like. It's got a nice gray color to it. The keys have a tactile feel, so you can hear it whenever you do a uh, tap on it, which some people like, Some pe it's all a matter just of a preference. Some people like the soft tap, some people like the tactile feel. Um, it's got the Lenovo branding here. Over here on the corner, it does have a couple decals. Now the specs on this computer here is, it is a 14 inch. And when they say 14 inch, let's go ahead and put a tape measure on it. So it's 12, the actual screen size is, just over 12 inches and then it's about seven inches on the height now when they say 14 they're measuring diagonally from one quarter to the other corner that's what the 14 inch is now this laptop here comes with four gig of memory and it's got a 64 gig emmc uh, which is the inside component there where it runs the processor so it should be plenty enough fast for uh, your basic average you know student who takes it to school or if you're somebody who just likes to browse the internet or check emails, watch a few YouTube videos, this computer will do the job for that. Now, if you're going to be somebody who's doing a lot of heavy lifting like video editing or photo editing, uh, you might want to get a little bit uh, stronger computer that can handle that kind of processing power. But for your simple um, you know, student or uh, somebody who's not on their computer like nonstop throughout the day, then this will be sufficient for them. But let's go ahead and put a power cable to it, turn it on, and get it set up. One thing I do want to point out before I do power it on is the ports on the side here. So on the side you have the USB-C where you plug it in to give it power. And then you get you one USB port here, a headphone jack, and a spot for like a micro SD card. So there's not really a whole lot of components there, but they make these things... Uh, to be thin and just very simple. That's why there's a low cost involved with these. Okay, once you power it on, I just, all I did was put in the USB-C cable. I didn't even put, turn on the power and it lit up. And now it's going to go through the setup process. Okay, so just at first glance with the touchpad here, it's very responsive to your finger whenever you are scrolling around with the mouse here. Uh, here in the bottom, hand or bottom left hand corner, there's the shutdown icon. Um, it doesn't have it in English at first setup, so you have to change your language there if you're wanting to put it in a different language. There is the accessibility icon here, and then right here it says let's go. So we're going to go ahead and click on let's go to get it set up. All right, so now it's going to ask you to connect it to your network, so you're just going to verify your Wi-Fi network, and then you'll put in your password. Once you enter in your password, it'll start to load. The Google Terms and Services will come up. You just click on accept and continue. Now it's going to check for updates. Over here on the bottom hand corner, you'll see there's a Wi-Fi icon that lets you know how strong your signal is. There is a battery indicator and then the time. Okay, so at first launch here, it is going to download all the updates. Now it says that I've got about 25 minutes left, so it depends on your Wi-Fi connection, your speeds, uh, how quick this will be. Okay, some important notes here to point out is that after you do update this, there will be no more waiting for updates. It'll automatically update on its own. And then also, uh, it does have a built-in virus protection in these computers, which is a very nice feature. You don't have to worry about getting those viruses. Um, your Google account is your sign-in, so you will have to have a Google account 
in order to get signed in here, which is very different from like signing into a, a Windows computer where you have to put in a PIN number or a password. So your Google account will be the sign in information for this. And then as far as apps go, you'll find all your apps on the Google Play Store to put on this computer. Okay, after it does its updates, the screen goes black and then your Chrome logo comes back up. Also, if you do want to shut this computer down, down on the bottom left-hand corner, there is a shutdown icon. It'll reconnect to your Wi-Fi network and then go through its proper steps. Now it's going to come up here and it's going to ask you who's using this Chromebook. If it's going to be you, you'll sign in there, but if it's a child, then you would click on that icon there and set up your child's account. Now the difference with the child's account is that you can set a digital playground rules to help children play, explore, and do schoolwork at home. But if you're setting this up for yourself, go ahead and click on you and then you'll just go on next. Now here is another good feature here. So say you do sign into your Chromebook here and you don't want people to access any of your personal information that you have signed in on your Chrome account. Uh, down in the bottom left hand corner again next to the shutdown icon there is a browse as guest so that way if you do lend your computer to somebody and they want to do some shopping online or something like that they can browse as a guest versus not being a, able to access all your settings in your Chrome account or your Google account. Alright so to go ahead and continue just sign in with your uh, password or your, or your email and then click on next. Okay, once you put in your email and password, this screen comes up here, says the please wait. Okay, now it'll sync your Chromebook according to your Google settings. It'll turn everything on, so you can either say no thanks or you can turn on the sync. What it'll sync over is like your bookmarks or passwords or browsing history or anything like that. It'll ask for the Google Play terms and conditions. You just click on more. Okay, and then now the Google Assistant will continue loading. All right, so it'll ask you, it says your Google Assistant is ready to help. So you just click on I agree. Now it's gonna ask for some permissions here to allow your assistant to use info that is on your screen to help. You can click on no thanks or agree. And then here is to access your assistant with uh, Hey Google. So everything is voice AI anymore. So this would be a way that you could talk to your computer without actually touching it just by saying, hey, Google. All right, so now it's going to teach the assistant to recognize my voice here. So I'm going to say, okay, Google, okay, Google, hey, Google, hey, Google. Okay, so it took those voice prompts, and now it's setting it up to my voice to get it all set up. Okay, so hey, I'm, I'm all set. Now here's a check mark if you want to unsubscribe to get in a bunch of different emails. I mean, I get it plenty enough emails already as it is, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, toggle that off so that way I'm not getting more communications and then I'm just going to go ahead and click on get started. Okay so this is what the actual screen looks like once you get it this far here. It almost looks a little bit like a like an iMac or a MacBook uh, the way that the settings are. All the icons are in the middle here on the bottom. It looks like there's your uh, Google Chrome logo. There's the mail. Looks like files. Probably the Google Duo. Uh, there's your Play Store, there's YouTube, and then there's Google Photos, and then there's a rocket ship. I'm not quite sure what that icon is. And then there's some more information here on the bottom right-hand corner. But uh, yeah, this is what it, the Google Chrome book looks like. As far as the actual picture goes, this is a pretty good-looking screen uh, for what you get and for the cost of it. One of the best things about a Chromebook is the when you power it down and then you power it back up, it only takes just a few seconds, so that it's really fast, and that's one of their uh, claims to fame is that they can power on very quickly. Okay, so when you tap on the bottom left-hand corner, this will come up here, and then you can search your device for apps, settings, or web, just like that. So almost kind of like the search menu on a Windows laptop. But there it is. This is the unboxing and setup of the Lenovo Chromebook. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, go ahead and click a thumbs up on it. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I make tech videos all the time, and I would love to have you back in the next one. Take care.